Hey guys, welcome to our For the Life of the World continuing the discussion, devotion number 16, week number four, point number four. That point is hospitality is establishing justice on a personal scale. Okay, they quote Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, which says, and the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. The study notes say, Jesus personalizes justice by showing that he pays attention to how we treat those who cannot fend for themselves, the hungry, the foreigner, the naked, the sick. Then they quote Hebrews 13, 12. Let me quote it directly in the whole thing. Hebrews 13, 12. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. No, oh, I read the wrong verse. I don't mind. I can't go wrong reading them. But that's interesting. I think God must have meant me to do that. He suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people. Hmm. He suffered for the people. I read the wrong verse, maybe providentially. Um, it was Hebrews 13, 2, excuse me. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Um, and the point they make is by putting himself in the uh, person being helped, uh, Jesus shows us that serving those in need is a way we can love God directly. So what they're saying, they said in a very linguistically strange way. He's saying, like, you see somebody that needs to be served, you see a stranger, treat them like you're serving me, uh, you know, because you are. That's the way I view it. I view when you help them, you're helping, you're serving me. I want you to view it the same way. Okay. Just like yesterday's idea was taking it personal, this, this, this is, you know, seeing hospitality, seeing being gracious, seeing sharing, seeing caring for people is one of those things that begins to equal the scales, you might say. It begins to make us um, uh, aware. We, we start to walk around with our antennas up. Who is in need in a way that they can't help themselves? And sometimes you see people, they can't help themselves. They just don't know how to. Uh, they, 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 they might have some barrier. Uh, some people it's a spiritual barrier, emotional barrier. Some people it's a talent barrier. Some people it's a situational barrier. Some people it's a it's a it's a it's a sin barrier. Like some people are calling the sin of laziness. Right, that's a barrier. So we take personal. How do we how do we help this person who cannot fend for themselves? Will not will not fend for them. Won't not will not fend for themselves is presently unable, even if it's self-inflicted, presently unable to fend for themselves. We say, how can I be involved in that? Now, Jesus says the emotional load is this heavy. You see them in need, you help them, and it's equal to helping me. You serve them, and it's equal to serving me. And he doesn't put any conditions on whether these people deserve it or not. Oh, boy. Does this mean we indiscriminately give money to, you know, crackheads? No. I don't think we're told to, to do much of anything indiscriminately. I've often said, and I believe with all my heart, one of the most untalked about an absolute necessary gifts from the Holy Spirit is discernment. Is knowing what to do, when to do, in such a way that only God could have revealed the um, could only God could have revealed the um, uh, the situation and the action to meet the situation. Discernment is so critical. I don't, I don't know how many times I feel I feel like I quote it to someone every day. That I quote James chapter 1 where it says, if anyone lacks wisdom. I think I quote it so much because I feel like I lack wisdom so much. I run into situations and I'll say, God, I know you want me to do something, but what can be done and am I the one to do it at this moment? And I need wisdom and I need discernment. 
what to do and what precisely or when precisely or how precisely am or or functionally am I the one who is involved in this precise activity so the point they wanted us to see throughout this whole message is there's this there's this global and cosmic and national uh, there's this large structure of 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 injustice there are many barriers to flourishing but then we've got to not only think about how we can be a part in uh, living out love toward those large structural issues but how do we take it personal how do we take it personal and their contention is to take hospitality personal to take helping the marginalized, serving the one that can't fend for themselves, graciousness. And what I love is that, uh, you know, they want it to be such the norm that we won't think it's strange to be commended for it. You know, some people do something good and they can't wait for somebody to notice it and commend them. Uh, I, I think what is in Matthew 25 being promoted to us is to make this such our lifestyle that we would be shocked that anybody would find that commendable, you know? Um, sort of like the person whose job it is to pick up litter and they've been doing it for 20 years and someone sees them picking up litter and they go, wow, man, you picked up that litter. And they go, yeah, it's what I do, you know? Um, they said, no, it's great. I'm like, mm, no, it's just what I do. I think this sort of radical hospitality, radical personal justice seeking, radical involvement in ideology that looks for ways to break down uh, barriers and, 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 and in, in, in bonding systems, I think God just wants that to become part of the church's DNA all the way down to each person of the church. That it's just part of our, our who we are and our value system and our action system so that we're always bringing to bear whatever we have, time, talent, treasure, whatever. Bringing to bear whatever we have to whoever needs it as if we're doing it to God himself. And, uh, you know, we've been bought with a price. That's why I told you, you know, it's, it's sort of a, you know, it sort of seems like it was an accident that instead of reading uh, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2 that I, I read Hebrews 13 uh, 12 but let's go back to that I think I was a uh, uh, what does old Bob Timberlake call it oh that's a happy little accident um, this is a happy little accident because here's here's our comparative thing so Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood Jesus suffered as as the the uh uh, the guilt offering, the, the 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 goat who bears the sin, he suffered outside of the gate. He suffered as a rejected one, so we could become sanctified, set apart ones. In other words, he suffered with the rejected to set apart people who would understand suffering with the rejected. I'm telling y'all that was a happy little accident. And it goes on to say in verse uh, 13 to 14, Hebrews, in Hebrews 13, Therefore let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. Verse 14, For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Wow. It goes on to say in verse 16, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. What a happy little accident that instead of reading... Hebrews 13, 2, I read Hebrews 13, 12. The ideology has to be in place and we have to take it personal. 